that's, 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 yeah. that's, that's important yeah. because, uh, I mean, what is the tragedy about uh, this present crisis? It's, of course, that it will have uh, effects on the real economy and that the workers in Italy or France or wherever who never participated in this type of casino, who never earned a single dollar out of that, they are going to lose their job as a consequence of, of that development. But uh, what yeah. is even more tragic is, uh, I do not know for how long you paid in your private pension fund uh, to mm -hmm. receive uh, mm -hmm. someone a pension, uh, and with uh, uh, some of the people will have uh, lost their entire their entire savings that should guarantee a decent uh, life when they're old. And I do not want to put people's uh, future while they're old just to the discretion of uh, the financial markets. And therefore, I think uh, for these basic social services, we have to recapture the space for the public again. Yeah. It's a wrong development to make pensions entirely dependent on the volatility of the financial markets. It's wrong. It, it, if I were um, inclined to radically disagree, which I'm personally not, but let me raise two questions okay. to both of you. Um, first, um, the first one actually comes from one of the great works of social science uh, in the 20th century, Karl Polanyi's book, The Great Transformation, which was about the collapse of uh, what he called liberal civilization of the 19th century. And as uh, it's possible to read that book in many ways, but one, one thing I believe he says is that in the 1920s, there were interventions in the marketplace by well-meaning political actors that had the effect of diminishing the capacity of markets to produce growth while simultaneously not producing social justice. That is to say, there, there may be a sweet spot of intervention and regulation, but there can be sour spots as well. And so the first puzzle is, if we move to a world of more regulation, more intervention, taking apart the system, etc., a more radical sense, which many of us, of course, uh, are deeply troubled by what's happening now. On the other side, what instruments um, and what capacities do we currently have to think that we wouldn't find a more sour rather than a more sweet spot? That's the first question. The second is a more global one. Um, we live in a world of continuous and continuing remarkable global inequality. Regulations um, superintended largely by political actors in the rich part of the world are um, likely um, to have as one effect, intended or unintended, a slowing down of movement of investment and capital globally. We've seen the pathologies of unrestrained movement yeah. of capital. But what happens when we hold on to it um, only in the richer parts of the world? What are the costs potentially with respect to global distribution issues and global questions of solidarity? So I put that question, those two questions to both of you. Well, um, I think you might want to walk back a step. Because in order to do something more than regulate, to have a serious change in the culture of capitalism, we need to think about the relationship between inequality and security. You know, much of the argument that was made about uh, the injustice of the new capitalism and with, and, and with great justice is that people have a basic need for security. You know, when Merleau-Ponty talks about, you know, ontological security as you mattering to other people and they mattering to you, that's not a recipe uh, for the global uh, swashbuckler. It's a recipe for trying to find a space in which it's possible uh, to have that sense of being present in the world, mattering to other people. And people 
for the sake of that, it's a matter of recognition, we'll accept a lot of inequality. That is to say, if you're, uh, again, I, it was something I, when I was studying workers in the, uh, manual laborers in the 70s, and again when I wrote this book, something that struck me over and over again. We imagine that inequality is a kind of fundamental wound for people at the bottom of a society. Now, there are, you know, if you're, you're not making enough money, yes, that's true. But more important to them is the sense of having a, uh, that recognition, being treated with respect, having the kind of security of that very, very fundamental sort, which is you matter to other people, and they also matter to you. It's why firms during the internet bubble uh, in uh, uh, seven or eight years, the firms that survived were firms in which uh, low-level employees stayed with the firm even as they were losing wages, and in which they'd been treated well by the people at the top. And I just say this because I, uh, the notion, you know, it's one of the ways we conventionally measure what's wrong with capitalism. This huge spread in salaries and so on. And it's sociologically and culturally naive. People have lived with inequality, you know, for eons. But it becomes unsustainable where there's no other kind of way of securing a place for yourself in the world for being recognized. And what's happened in the last 15 years is that that way of securing a place where if you're just an ordinary guy or girl working in a firm, that you're likely to be, get that kind of recognition, that's diminished. Labor unions used to get it for you. There are lots of institutional ways this happens. So I'm, I'm just uneasy about making inequality in itself a kind of barometer of injustice. People can live with it. What they can't live with is a lack of respect. Coming to your question of sour or sweet uh, intervention, of course, uh, there always is the danger that uh, uh, there is too much regulation. Uh, especially in times like today where uh, everybody is witnessing what, what is going on. There is the danger that the pendulum is too radically going into the other direction. This uh, uh, is why I'm focusing a very um, uh, differentiated attitude concerning that issue. But I think uh, one could see that this classic uh, dilemma or this uh, contradiction, on the one hand, economic success, on the other hand, uh, social justice, that this um, contradiction has been quite well dissolved by countries like the Scandinavian countries uh, who were able over a long, long time uh, to com yeah. and Austria mm -hmm. to combine uh, social justice with uh, enormous economic uh, enormous. Growth. Uh, growth and uh, and development. So, uh, of course, there are difference, but it's possible. What concerns the consequences uh, concerning the global imbalances? I mean, the, <laughs> the sequence of uh, crisis is uh, rather rapid nowadays, no? Because uh, in between the subprime and now the new financial market crisis, we had the. Uh, new food and uh, oil price crisis, uh, which of course is to a certain extent um, an expression of the present uh, imbalances between uh, some of the countries that are producing oil and uh, all the raw material, the consumer countries, and uh, this uh, development we faced this year was, in my understanding, an expression to rebalance uh, the relationship between that two. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there always is the danger, if you do a global regulation, uh, that some are more benefiting from this regulation than others. 
This is why I favor democratically legitimized decision makers uh, who are taking the decisions. I mean, if it's uh, uh, if there is no partner on the table, then uh, then it will be uh, very one-sided. But uh, what is the issue behind, I think, is first, there will be a decadence of uh, the power of the United States in the world as a consequence of this uh, financial market crisis. And uh, there will be uh, some sort of political rebalancing. I do not know what will be the result, but uh, we are in a situation of uh, fundamental, fundamental change. Yeah. This, is, this is my yeah. feeling. And uh, this will also determine who will be, let's say, the, uh, the more or less influential partner in these negotiations. I mean, uh, take the failure of the Doha round. Mm -hmm. This already was an expression that the uh, present parameters of power distribution yeah. in the world do not work anymore because, uh, um, let's say, an accord uh, pleasing the North was not possible anymore. So one has to be prepared to, to reach uh, a more balanced uh, agreement uh, which can find uh, the consensus of all. And that it did not happen was, in my understanding, already an additional element of... Uh, of this crisis of uh, power distribution. And what uh, is the main task, of course, for, for people like me is uh, not only to work on the national level on some of these issues and trying to, be, uh, trying to build a society that is combining economic development and social justice, but of course the main uh, level of influence for us is uh, Europe and uh, the European Union. And uh, contrary to all the Eurosceptical talk uh, in the aftermath of the, of the Irish referendum, uh, I think that Europe is the best place to lead the debates that we are having right now because the impetus will not come from Russia and it will not come from India and it will not come from China because the, their affection with the present problems is a quite different one. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, Europe is uh, very well placed to to play an an, an eminent role uh, in that in that context. The question, primarily for you, but I'd be interested in your reflections as well, concerns whether or not in this moment of I'll use the bland word change, <laughs> but perhaps crisis. Um, uh, uncertainty, mm -hmm. uh, fear. Um, uh, do democratic politicians, do democratically elected governments possess uh, the legitimacy, the faith of their citizens, um, the support uh, from below to give them the room, given a, a recent history of a kind of delegitimation of uh, government for many reasons. Do, do they, do you, uh, uh, have the, um, the democratic capacity to take collectively the kinds of deliberations and actions which would be required, as you put it, to simultaneously work towards a world um, characterized both by uh, social justice and by economic growth and development? Well, first, we're a little bit more legitimized than these uh, Wall Street guys, I would say. No? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and the thing is that uh, I think we are living in a time